Hello, Sasha Flaghi, and welcome to this new edition of the Video Market Analysis. Uh, uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, the virus and the uh, the to and from movements in the markets, and how, uh, it, it, interestingly, uh, uh, unlike the trade war, uh, oil and indices and the yen, they're all moving really, really in tandem. Um, vis-a-vis -vis the, uh, the, you know, the developments and there is more cases in China as opposed to the trade war when there was always the yen or it was indices that was really coming at the forefront showing high sensitivity, tracking the pendulum of risk off um, either the yen or indices but not all of them together but with th this case it's pretty fierce. Um, I'm going to, um, w although we have, so here's the thing, we have two trades are right now open in the euro dollar and in sterling and i think we should leave them and i'll tell you the trade the strategy i know this used has been uh, this word has been used and overused but this is definitely i'm going to give you a strategy on how to approach the bank of england decision on thursday at 12 p.m 12 p.m london time 7 a.m uh uk uh, us and uh so that's 12 p.m. Um, Saudi, uh, that's 12 p.m. London, and it's uh, 3 p.m. Saudi time, 4 p.m. Dubai. So this is very important. Uh, before that, I'd like to uh, say um, I hope you've uh, you've uh, you've closed uh, this as we closed it. The short oil 59.65. We sold it 59.65. We closed it at. Uh, we closed it at 52.55, made uh, over $7, 700 pips. Uh, I think there's going to be further uh, declines, but not sharp declines, but further declines into the next three or four weeks in uh, indices. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about this today. Uh, I'll talk about the sterling dollar and the euro dollar because I made some videos. Is uh, sorry if I didn't give a that I didn't give a video last week. I was uh, busy traveling. But uh, what's important is what's going to happen now. Uh, but with regarding indices, uh, it's general. Uh, things are not going to go to their high anytime soon. Things are not going to go down 10% from now, but I think we're going to go slightly go up, and then we're going to go down, and probably we're going to go slightly lower. But uh, 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 so be careful out there. Now. The all the stuff, all the talk about the rate cuts happening uh, for the BOE started when there was a member, Viljegi, who was basically quite dovish, said that he sees the the need to rate. Um, if there is a need to rate, to cut rates, then he will pull the trigger. But that's all he was saying. If there is the need, we will pull the trigger. And he started all this talk around January eighth, and. And as he started, the probability of a rate cut went from 6% to all the way to 70%. And as that happened, but he didn't say we will do it. So it was from January 8 until January 17th. And as he started that from January the 8th, here's what happened. Uh, January 8. So from January 8, here, January 7th, and then we, and we fell. But why did we push back up? There's two main reasons. And the main reason is because, as he said that, the PMIs, the PMIs, the Pursing Managers Indices for services, for manufacturing, and the composite, which is the mix, they came higher than expected. They were quite strong. And industrial production came in strong. So people were behaving as if there is going to be, that is, as if a rate cut is a done deal. And what really happened was that just a few more remarks by this person who was quite dovish, he's, he's originally Dutch, um, uh, he basically said, if there is the need to do it, we will pull the trigger. So it was an if-then statement. And But then we had these, this improvement here uh, because of what, what he said. Interestingly, on, um, on um, last week, when... Javed Sajid, the uh, the Treasury Secretary for the 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 Treasury Secretary for the uh, U.S. Uh, for the U.K. basically said that we will give uh, a priority to the to the EU in coming up in uh, in reaching a deal trade deal over the and uh, over the U.S. and basically a Newton, uh, who was the U.S. counterpart said, "Oh, we thought we would go first, but anyway, that was a good sign, meaning that increases the chances that yes, the U.K. is taking EU seriously." in reaching a deal and it, it, it augments the chances that they may do it before the end of the year 
But here is what I think is going to happen. So there's two main things that are that is going to determine what will happen to Sterling. Well, I would say three main things that is going to determine what will happen to uh, Sterling Thursday. So the least important one is the one is the is the uh, is the press conference by Jay Powell on Wednesday tomorrow at the Federal Reserve meeting. Okay. Uh, the most important is obviously whether there is a rate cut or not. So as you can see, the chances, the odds of a rate cut for the January 30th meeting, they declined from uh, 70% to 56 Now, because of the data was improving and so on and so forth. Now, if they do, if they do cut rates, then I think it will be more like an insurance rate cut. It is not needed. There is no disaster out there. One of the worst things have been averted. Yes, the uh, exit has been has been reached and so on. Uh, but whether they're going to reach a deal at the end of the year or not, this is not going to be something a matter of immediacy. You know, immediate uh, uh, immediate revelation. So that that so that won't. It, we still have eleven months ahead. But what's more important? What's more important is that, and because of the of the indicators have been improving than the um, if they will do one rate cut it will be a one and done or it will be you know a one and done or it will be perceived as a one and done or it will be perceived as a uh, as an insurance one and that's why there is two things you can do you can you can do you can you can buy so this is the short answer and then I'll give you in detail so you can issue a two uh, uh, two trades the larger sized trades will be issued below the market below the market so if you're going on thursday into thursday half hour for decision or 20 minutes for decision and we are 30 16 it's good to do it around 29.80 or 29.60 assuming that uh, but you will do a larger a larger uh, uh size trade than the second trade which i'm going to speak about in a bit the first trade is this one so an if done order or buy limit here around 129.80 or 129.60 but just around this level and there is a cluster of very important support so there's a 55 dma there is the horizontal um uh, uh the horizontal uh, support previous support now resistance and there's a trend line here and then there's even this one the dotted red white line from the lows so this is what's going to be key and i think even 128.50 could be support so here's what i think is that and i'll tell you that what's going on in the us dollar is also in line in this so the so if you have let's say if you usually go with one lot let's say so you would do one lot here and around this level lower assuming that if there is a rate cut the market is going to come down and then they're going to realize that it's you know that the, there is a commentary yes they're improving and it's also going to depend whether you know it's going to be a seven to two vote or six to three so if there's a seven to two rate cut uh, that would be more negative for sterling because seven would have voted as many as seven have voted for for a rate cut as opposed to uh, uh, only six or five so if it's five to four it's basically the uh, uh, it's five to four. Then that is the least positive for sterling. Uh, so here, is, uh, sorry, it's the least negative, least negative. And the bigger size and the smaller size trade is to issue a long at the at the market, and that's how we do it. So basically, I would issue uh, a, a a a smaller size, so a zero point five. A size a 0 0.5 lot let's say if you usually do one one lot if that's the standard then save that higher size for buying not at the market but slightly lower at 29.70 or probably 29.40 or even this low here okay and as you, why because if they do a rate cut the market would come down and then it will go up and assuming and then you know then it will it will be caught or you do nothing if you do nothing and if they do a rate cut, then you will try, as it declines, you will try to catch. But the problem is you'll be playing that game, oh, I'll wait some more, I'll wait some more. And then before you know it, the market escapes and you stop going up and then you start buying at the top. Or if you don't do anything and if they do not cut rates, then the market will take off. The thing is that if the market will take off, the reason why you will do a smaller size, because even though you will do it a smaller size at the market, if the market takes off, the reaction will be rapid and that will make up for the smaller size entry so this is this is the way to play it it will make up for the smaller size entry and then it would be 
the magnitude of the move would be as if you've gotten at a higher size um, at, uh, at, at below the market and that is the key so this is how we would play it and I would say given that the and this is what we think the dollar is still going to do or sterling dollar is still going to do uh, this is a referendum and then the ERM you got the ERM here in 1992 you got a decline higher high low higher lows and then you take off and this is where I think we're going to be we're going toward 137 and 140 okay now the other one and then I want you to pay attention to this which is uh, this chart very very important chart one of the most important charts of the well actually now I have it here so I will do that later uh, so I'll do this later but ladies and gentlemen this is what I think is really the most important chart so um, if we start with this so this is the dollar index and we are at a head and shoulder and this head and shoulder is very similar to what happened in late November 16 in November 16 and then early 2017 which is basically when we had the last hooray of Trump victory uh, in uh, in uh, and then so we had basically Trump winning November 2016 head and shoulder and then we fell and this is what we're seeing so this is what's helping and we are nearing the right shoulder and this may be brought about by probably the federal reserve so if the federal reserve comes up with something hawkish i think then i think that we're probably going to push higher and then come back down if it's coming if it's going to come with some dovish basically they're going to say that we're going to continue to do the repo purchases and so on and so forth so that's going to come down and this how does this stand in line with the other markets and the, similarly with the euro here where we are shoulder head shoulder we're still respecting a higher lows and have we seen this before yes we have yes we have november 2016 when remember when we were long here and basically november 2016 december 2016 what you had you had the first low on the right shoulder and then you had a higher low the second right shoulder okay so it's called the second right shoulder the first low the right shoulder the second low very similar and higher low and this is what we're seeing pretty amazing stuff if you ask me and we have to keep an eye on these things and if you do the weekly you will see the analog pretty convincingly the weekly and here's where you will see it and here's where we are in the US dollar higher lows but we're gonna break higher low gonna break what is important the reason why we're seeing dollar strength is that it's guided by dollar yuan and this is what we're seeing this is the US dollar versus the yuan because we had that decline in the yuan after the uh, after the virus and this is what we're seeing so this right shoulder may take a while to play up as this is as this goes up US dollar goes up and yuan goes down okay and this is where we had basically when the US labeled China as a money as a manipulator can manipulator that the heat of the of the adversarial exchanges between the US and the China trade war happened in the summer and then basically we had a head and shoulders so basically you had 720 703 basically 17 taking this it will be 690 93 uh, 83 so it will be 83 and that's what it is 17 minus 7 it was 83 and 683 so we had 685 and this is the target so i think we're going to retest probably seven and then we're going to come back down similarly with with gold what you're seeing is <coughs> the height here between the triangle 54 63 90 90 plus 54 will give you uh 1645 so i believe the next target is going to be just around 1645 same thing here you had 1346 as the height as the high 1282 so the difference of 60 60 plus 1347 is 1407 plus change 1412 and that's where we are here we reach 1412 so these basically overlaying all the a similar uh, formation here and that's why I would say that this is a very important level here the euro is at one of its lowest when it is cheapest okay 
And I think it's a great, great uh, 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 buy here, the euro dollar. More importantly, more importantly, this important chart shows the German minus euro yield, euro, German yields minus US yield. It is at its highest level since in over two years, almost two years, February 2018. And that's where we are, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope this is going to work for you. And as for basically with indices, for those of you who are asking about indices, uh, again, please just remember about that trade I told you about Sterling. Okay. And um, yeah, uh, buy one higher size below uh, at the uh, 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 below the market and the, the smaller size at the market. Uh, market wants to be testing here 55 DMA in the Dow 28,300, which is very similar to this. Okay, but I do think that we're going to have a nice probably rebound in the next few days, and then we. I don't think it's going to take us to the high, and we're going to have to come down. Thank you very much, and all the best.